Yeah, that's just funny. I mean, that's ridiculous. <laughs> okay, well, glad we could. I didn't expect you to be so frank about it. <laughs> this is bang, bang, bang. The Jam Jam Afro Beats Show. We've got a very special guest in the building. Mobo Award winner nonetheless. MTV Africa nominated. Free chart hits to his name. It's Fuse! It's Fuse! <laughs> what do you say, bad boy, jam jam? <laughs> okay, my, my impression of you wasn't that great. Aye, 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 aye! It's, it's Fuse! Aye, <laughs> <laughs> what's bro? Good, bro? How good, man? How you been? It's been a very long time. You're just gallivanting around the whole world at the moment. Yeah, man, as you do. I mean, crazy, right? <laughs> yeah, it's been mad. Did you know the last time I interviewed you was over two years ago? I know, right? And that that's been circulating as well. The freestyle that I yeah, did. the yeah. cipher. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's bring everyone up to date uh, for a bit. Last summer, you dropped Antenna officially. It peaked at number seven in the UK single mm. charts. Eleven million hits on YouTube. Mm. Highest charting Afrobeat single in the UK. Mm. Makes you the king of UK Afrobeat, right? <laughs> yeah, it makes me someone who can who's doing well, you know, with this music. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, I think that put, I mean, like, we've um, listed our top five Afrobeats a lot here on the show. And your name is always put first. Really? Oh, wow, that's that's good. I'm happy to hear. And then second is Mr. Silver, usually. Okay. Yeah, no, well, statistically, yes, you know, but I, I, I don't go around saying I'm the king of, you know, because I feel like I'm, I'm aiming for the world, not for, like, a little... You know, segment of uh, for, for music genre. You know, when well, you say statistically, that means you're making money. You're I'm counting not, numbers. Not making a lot of money, Jam Jam. So <laughs> let's talk about that. Let's let's because because obviously there's a lot of people listening out there who just started. Yeah. And now you and I met you as you kind of just started. Yeah, yeah I know, I know, I know. And more. so it's it's really nice for me to watch the rise. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. what what what's changed for you? You know, as far as you know, money's concerned, girls are concerned. Like, who, who have you got on your phone these days? You know, these kind of things. Nah, yeah, nah, nah. Um, it's a lot has changed like from when antenna dropped to now we sold half a million wow yeah so just from that you know it's it's, it's, it's crazy and my life has changed in terms of like yeah yeah there's money there also how people perceive me you know the kind of people that i've met my network you know everything is crazy everything is different you know what i'm saying so yeah, man, I'm really thankful, you know. That's good, that's good. I saw an Instagram video a little while back. You brought your manager, Mr. Hackett. Mr. Hackett. <laughs> you bought him a new ride. Yeah, man, Mercedes Benz, man. German deserves... whip, German whip. Yeah, man. <laughs> Catch you driving a German whip. <laughs> Actually, you, you, I was thinking about this. That guy should do an Afrobeats remix. Why don't you jump on the Afrobeats Afro remix? What's his name? Meridian Dan. Meridian Dan. Yeah, Meridian Dan. Yeah, man, he knows that's my guy, so okay, I'll, you... I'll be willing to work with him. So, 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 what would, what would the, the, the Afrobeat remix, what would it be? An, a, a La Pastoyota. <laughs> <laughs> La Pastoyota whip. <laughs> German whip. <laughs> yeah. uh, let's talk, um, obviously you've done a lot of international collaborations now. And, and I think the, the first story is kind of known, the Wyclef Jean. I think you've kind of told people how that happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you've got the new, the latest one out now is with Sean Paul. Dangerous Love, How? out this Sunday. Go out there and get your copy now. <laughs> no, that's, yeah, there's a plug. Um, the, so how did that collaboration come about? Um, last year I did a lot of shows with Sean Paul. Um, when he came over to the UK, I was the guy supporting him. Um, so that's how we connected and we got to talking about making a song together. Um, straight away we knew that, you know, it had to be, you know, Afro beats meet, meet dancehall. You know, so we knew the direction I was gonna go, and it just happens to be that you know I had a studio session with also a guy called Stephen McGregor, aka the Genius from Jamaica, the producer who, who produces Sean Paul's album. Um, and yeah, I had a session with him, and that's how Dangerous Love got started. And you know, I, I went over to Ghana to work with Kill B as well, so he can touch it up. And then you know, me and Stephen started talking about yo, we should get Sean on this. You know, and I had already spoken to Sean about making a song with him anyway, so and Stephen got a great relationship with him as well. So when Sean got back to Jamaica, you know, I already sent the song to him. He went over to Stephen's studio, he loved it, put the verse down, sent it back. I was in Ghana with Kill Beep, we heard it, we went crazy, we're like, mm -hmm. yo, it's about we're about to go historical again, you know. So it's crazy how it happened, but it was all naturally, you know, the elements involved were all natural, you know. 
So these guys, I mean, you've also got conscience on the the million pound go remix. On the million pound go. Yeah. Is that again your link through um, the genius? Oh uh, no, no, that's that's all. That's bumping into him at the shows that I've been doing. I've I bumped into conscience a couple of times at some of the shows that that we've done together, and that's that's how we connected again. And then started talking to him, and yeah, just sent over the song to him, and he sent it back to me the next day. <laughs> wow, it was crazy. So yeah. this this isn't a money thing we're talking. About. This is no, no, genuine no, no, no. Sort yeah, of love for each like other. Sean Paul's like. He, we asked him how much you know do you want us to pay he said i should just pay him with a verse you know so for someone to say that to me as an artist you know is it's it i don't know i just I wait feel what like, does that mean pay him with a verse what he like, let him just put the track a verse on I, he gives he sent me his track and i put a verse on it and that's it oh okay you know what i'm saying so there's so, another track out there which you, you've got a verse on of his no, nah, that, that's going to be my payment to him for him oh. putting a verse on mine. So when he calls you, when yes. you get that call? Actually, I'm ready for it, do you know what okay, I'm saying? Yes. So I'm like, wow, like, I'd pay you to drop on your song now. <laughs> you say you pay, you want me to drop a verse as a payment of you dropping a verse on mine. So wow, that's it's really nice, cool. you know, to know that he really respects me like that. Yeah, that's amazing. And you've just dropped a new video, Afro versus Dancehall, which is a dance competition. Yeah, 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 with Sean Paul. Um, cause the idea behind that is for Africa to, you know, to amalgamate with the Caribbean, Afrobeats versus dancehall. So, you know, we're hoping that, you know, this will help the Africans learn about the Caribbeans and the Caribbeans learn more about the Africans. Just so we know that we're all one people, you know. So, I'm looking forward to how it materializes. And you, you've teamed up with your long-time dance collaborator, collaborators, Tracy and Mr. Antenna. Yes. Um, Why are you always working with these guys? Because they were the winners from from the last competition, and the winners from this competition, I'm working with them lo with lo loyalty. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm loyal to the winners of the last competition. So part of the um, prize for the winner for the antenna dance was for them to work with me. You know, and and I've stayed true to that. You know, so we're hoping. You know, I'm hoping I'll be able to connect with you know some different winners from this competition constantly keep working we actually need to get them on the show I really like them because I think their personality comes across when they dance they don't yeah, yeah. just dance anyhow yes sir. they've got a great and they actually got caught up in uh, where is it Oxford Street in the middle of Oxford Street they in the middle up. of the road man. <laughs> crazy. dancing <laughs> crazy now we've talked about a few of your sort of highlights we're brushing through quickly over the, your highlights of your career mm -hmm. but for me your highlight mm -hmm. was forget uh, what you did, you did mobile awards, you yeah, did wireless. Yeah. That's not the real highlight. The, the real highlight <laughs> is getting interviewed by Jeremy Paxman on Newsnight. Oh my god. The Paxman. That was crazy, Mr. Paxman. I was so like anxious and I, I I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know whether he was gonna put it on me, you know, to try and catch me out some way, somehow. But them kind of shows it's all about, you know, them arguing. That's what he's known other. for. That's yeah, what he's exactly, known for. exactly. So literally like he was on my side you know everything was just bigging up tina the intro was even epic do you know what i'm saying i was just looking at that i was thinking wow this is crazy look at how far we come you know to be on news night and to actually be spreading the message of new africa and to perform million pound girl it was just amazing like, but he doesn't have a clue about Afrobeats. yo you'd be surprised you know after we were just talking and talking he's like yo i love your music and yeah we, we had a great chat for a long time you know what I'm saying? So, man, it's crazy that someone like him. Did you get you him know? to do a Zonto? <laughs> no, I didn't get him to do a Zonto. <laughs> Maybe two years ago, I would have got him to do a Zonto. <laughs> Verbal Vixen. Yes, um, you just mentioned Tina, and we've seen you a lot, like talking about Tina. You've got, you've mm -hmm. got a hat right now that says Tina on it. Like, tell us more about Tina. What is it? Tina stands for This Is New Africa, and it's a movement, you know, to showcase Africa in a new light and you know it's a platform for you know africans or even non-africans to share ideas about how we can better the continent so what what do you believe is holding africa's image back nor new africa image um i don't think there's anything holding us back did you see my paxman question <laughs> <laughs> i don't think there's anything holding us back obviously we all just need to i feel like the media is doing this thing which is they'll show whatever they want to show and we need to do our thing as well, but we need to make the noise so loud that, you know, it, it overpowers what the media says about Africa, you know. So I don't think there's anything holding us back. We just got to keep doing what we're doing. Like how I'm doing what I'm doing, you know, I get to certain platforms and I use it to spread the message. I got on the mobile, you know, I'm hoping, you know, the platforms will get raised. Newsnight, all these platforms, you know, all of us need to do our bit. You know? So, I mean, 
I love the, the message and everything and I think you're right there is a whole perception of Africa which doesn't get seen by the mainstream media here in the UK so why not do a more political, politically motivated song or talk about it more in your lyrics? Yeah. Because your lyrics are, are, or your songs as a whole, they're more the commercial mm. type, yeah. sort of light-hearted. So why mm. not take that into your music more? Is there a reason why you haven't or...? Because sometimes it's easier, you know, to um, get the people in the room by giving them food, free food. And then once they're in the room, you tell them what they're there for, you know, so that's that's pretty much been my strategy um, and as time goes on you know they get the album my album is coming out in August and then they get to see the different sides to Fuse ODG and then a couple singles off the album will have certain messages in there that actually correlates with the Tina movement you so, know I've made sure that if it's not in, in my music I'll make sure the message gets out there somewhere somehow you know mm. <laughs> Um, I was reading up on your website. I don't know if you still do. This, you're still involved with this project. The project's called Escape. Yeah. Are you still doing that? And what what's yeah, it about? Yeah, yeah. Um, Escape is a it's a project that gives young people activities to do from music to dance to art to poetry to sports and with a theme to make them realise the opportunities that this country's got and to take advantage of it. And yeah, I've I've been doing it for years, way before Azonto even blew up. Um, we used to get council funding, but now we're funding the projects ourselves with our own money. You know, because yeah, you know, we're more independent now. And yeah, man, we're looking to do it bigger and better because now the brand is on a different level, and we'll be able to do it on a bigger scale. Mm -hmm. yeah. Obviously, I mean, I mean that's great. I'm gonna to get hit. you to come down to do a DJ <laughs> workshop. <laughs> it's funny because I know. Obviously, you've asked me to do this before. See, I've, I've asked I, you before. I've run See? away from it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have a heart of gold like you, Fuse. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cold. <laughs> I ain't got no time for that. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm joking. <laughs> um, so obviously, I've been mean, like talking about the success you've had in the Afrobeat scene. You've got to mix up with a lot of people. In the in the UK mainstream media, people like talk Trevor Nelson, Charlie Sloth, mm -hmm. and we've mentioned Wyclef Sean, um, mm -hmm. Conscience, and Sean Paul, and all these kind of characters. What do they? What have you talked to them about the Afrobeats music? Are, are they aware yeah, of this of course, music? I what? speak to Wyclef all the time about the Afrobeat music, and you know we spoke about um, yeah how we can take it to the globe. You know, and he's on it. Um, we've got some ideas that we're going to execute in the future. So definitely. I do talk to them. When I saw Trevor Nelson, I spoke to him. He was telling me about how he was hearing my music in Barbados. He just came out from holidays, hearing P Square and all these people. So these guys know what's going on. They really know what's going on. Charlie Sloth, like we spoke about so much about, you know, Afrobeast. We just spoke about eating fufu. He loves eating fufu. Like all these things, you know, that. Who, Charlie Sloth? Um, Charlie Sloth. I think he's eating a lot of fufu in his life. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I says, I'm finding out all these things, so I definitely do talk to these people so we can, you know, so they can stay on our side, you know, mm. so whenever the, the subject comes up, they can speak positively about it. But definitely, I'm working closely with Wycliffe, you know, for some future projects, you know, so we're going to do it big. You just mentioned like Charlie Sloth, Trevor Nelson, kind of big names in the urban industry. Mm -hmm. But generally, I mean, I think the urban industry is still being slow with the uptake on Afrobeats. And unless it's you or some other people you just mentioned, they won't really write about it, talk about it and kind of focus on these people. Why do you think the urban scene's been slow with Afrobeats? You think that, I think the Afrobeats artists need to make more music and we need to be more active because our, my music is, is getting played because I'm active in making music and pushing it there so we all need to be active in making the music and not just any music good music that can stand next to ellie golden that can stand next to you know um just name any artist that's out there that's in the top 10 right now just it needs to be able to stand next to any music you know so so they can't just call it Afrobeat and try and brush it to the side so so when a normal person hear it they can't help it but move to it or just share it you know, so I think we all just need to keep working hard and just keep, we need to flood the scene in order to have more music. You've been uh, talking about kind of Tina and what that means, but would you, I mean, in terms of like your lyrics and stuff, mm. you haven't really maybe used so much African like vernacular, like slang or any tree or anything like mm. that. You know, is it a purposeful decision and maybe why, why don't you use as much kind of slang, African slang as say other UK Africans? Because I don't talk like that in real life. <laughs> that's not how I talk in real life exactly how I am with my songs is how I am in real life my African accent is so terrible <laughs> it's terrible but I wish I could actually rap in tree 
Like, I could speak tree, I could do the normal tree, but it, I can't do a speech in tree. Like, so until I'm comfortable and I feel like it's me, then yeah, I have to just be myself for my checks. <laughs> but do you think in the UK, um, someone using, say, whether it's tree or mm -hmm. Ibo or Yoruba in a song mm -hmm. would actually be, you know, has the potential to be successful? Or would it put people? Yeah, of course, of course. Antenna, most people don't understand what I'm saying, especially most English white girls they don't understand what i'm saying she they do me why oh but they're singing it do you know what i'm saying so and it's infectious so they don't need to understand um look at what gandam style did he was not speaking english you know so i don't think it, it, as long as it sounds good and it sounds infectious and it sounds undeniable it will be fine okay um back to um obviously that was antenna you were talking about there um but a few months after antenna you released uh the or well, the official azonto release now obviously people that follow afrobeats will know that that was your first um release um but obviously you would got the distribution deal now and they now repackaged it who decided now to do it in that order well, um i seem to do antenna first yeah and then to do azonto it's because antenna was out at that time and antenna was buzzing so you know in fact um, the people that we're working with, Freebeat, you know, they, were, they was going to do it from how we started it. But, you know, obviously Mr. Hackett, we, we, wherever we say, you know, the goal with what we say, we had a meeting and they're like, okay, this song is buzzing, we're going to go with this song as the first single. Mm -hmm. You know, and we nearly moved on, but me and Hackett were saying, like, that Zonto deserved another chance, you know, because Zonto should have been in the charts, but it wasn't. So we said, you know what, we always want, wanted it to be in the charts, man. Why not? Instead of moving on to the next track, let's go back to Azonto. And, and, and it got to chart number 28. So I'm happy mm. for Azonto. <laughs> so what do you think your strongest track is? Um, man, I really love Million Pound Girl um, and Antenna. So okay. it's one of my two favorites. Um, you, you're one of the artists to really utilize the sort of social media and viral videos yeah. particularly. Um, like the first, the original Azonto video, which was the viral video, which you w didn't even feature in, uh, got, it's, it clocked up 16 million views. Yeah. Do you regret releasing that on someone else's YouTube account? No, because I still get paid for it. Oh really? really? <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't matter what channel it's on. <laughs> oh really? I didn't know that. Yeah, so you yeah, can I'm teaching you jazz jazz. <laughs> yeah, That's learning. what I learned. <laughs> so you don't have to. It doesn't have to be on your channel for you to actually get revenue from it. Oh, so it's okay, okay, kind of yeah. because you still own the rights of the song itself. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Very so I interesting. don't regret. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's, it's what blew you onto the scene. Whatever anyway. belongs to you belongs to you legally. Mm. Now, obviously, you're kind of in the UK. Mm -hmm. You're you're known as sort of the Azonto pioneer or one of the Azonto pioneers. But I mean, I know you admit this yourself. It's not that you started the Azonto movement. Yeah, I am. Was, I, mean, I am the uh, the pioneer of Azonto because. Most people heard it through the viral, that was onto viral, and I know this because I've travelled so many places, and it was my Azonto that, you know, managed to spread the, the word of the, the dance. Well, I mean, even me when I was trying, I remember when I was trying to learn Azonto back in the day, there was not really one clear cut video you yeah, could exactly. watch to it was learn that. it. It was that, yeah. and it's, it's the video with the most views as well, anyway. So. Mm. So, but how do you, when you're going back to Ghana or yeah. other countries in Africa, yeah. how do they treat you? Do they have any resentment towards you to say, look, we've been doing a Zonto from before you started it? Or how do they look at you because you're the first sort of, or one of the first UK artists yeah. to go, to be popular in the Afrobeat scene, yeah, but go back to Africa? Yeah, I reckon in the beginning they might have felt some, some, some type of way, but, but no one ever said anything to me. But right now, like, they all, well, everyone's asked me to make a song with them so <laughs> if you don't like me you want to make a song with me i don't know <laughs> okay so okay so people have made you so have you turned down any features um you haven't heard me any features bro like <laughs> so no you've, you've done one with d money that's yeah. the only one i've done um d money you know the d money one was funny like he just came in whilst i was recording the song and mm -hmm. I was in a zone and he's like, yo, he started writing to it quick and yeah, that's it, he got the song. So I asked me. Um and yeah, you know, he's the biggest artist in Ghana, so I did it. But I don't do a lot of features, man, and but I don't like to turn down people as well. So it's it's really awkward, you know. So I'll just say that they're all just pending. <laughs> okay. So so um do you so are there any big names you've turned down? Um like I said, they're all just pending. I've never said no. Okay. Do you know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> when the time uh, is right, we'll do it. 
speaking of big names, there was a rumor going a few months back now where you were pictured with Don Jazzy. I think you were in Lagos. Oh yeah. And there was like rumor that you were going to be signing with Maven, or you were in yeah, talks with Don Jazzy. Yeah, I was crazy. Can you set that straight. Yeah, that was crazy. I just he just asked us to pass through, and we just went down there. Just he played us some crazy bangers, drunk some drinks, and we left. That's it. And we just took a picture and we left. And then people just interpreted the pictures as Don Jazzy signing Fuse ODG. Like, I find that really crazy because ODG in itself, we're a movement. You know, we're a record label ourselves. And if anything, we need to sign Don Jazzy. <laughs> I've actually described this on the show before. Like, I, I, I don't know whether I would class you as Afrobeats anymore. I class you more sort of in your own lane and mm -hmm. uh, Afro pop. Yeah. Do you think that's fair to say that to you? Um, I think you could class me however you want to class me. I'm for, I'm forever gonna be here. <laughs> but would you, how would you describe yourself? Um, I'm an African artist, Afrobeat. You know? uh, have you have you got have you got? There's a new sound sweeping in um, Ghana, Al Qaeda. Have you got any Al Qaeda type flows coming? No. <laughs> You're not ready to jump on another wave like that. No, because of the name. You know, I'm not. I'm not. Why would I promote a name like that? You know, in fact, um, you guys, you see, uh, to be honest, the only way I would join it is we rebrand it. Okay. That's it, because I don't, come on, like, we all know what, in the Western world, what the Al-Qaeda means. Mm -hmm. There's no way I could go to BBC Radio 1 and try and teach them the Al-Qaeda. You know? <laughs> Jeremy Paxman doing Al-Qaeda. <laughs> you know, Jeremy Paxman, like, come on, man, like, come on. That's going to start a war. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you were actually, uh, we were talking about sort of ODG and your label, but I think there was a little time, because you worked so often with the producer Kill Beats, who you mentioned earlier, I, I imagine you like, you're like the invisible member of R2Bs. <laughs> Shout out to Kill Beat, man. Yo, the best producer in the world, man. Um, yeah, R2Bs, I'm a family, man. They're my family, I love RTBs, man. When I'm in Ghana, I'm always with them, chilling. Um, yeah, we're always together, man. We went to Amsterdam together, just chilling. Mugis is my brother, man. Do you know what I'm saying? So, Payday, my guy, Ohine, like, yo, I love them guys. Do you have any tracks with them? Um, I haven't got any tracks with RTBs, um, but it's still pending. Like, okay. We've been meaning to work for so long, it's crazy. <laughs> but what we make is going to be magical. <laughs>